Hey, Kathy. I'd say happy Friday, but it's happy Thursday. It is a happy Thursday. This week has been like my favorite week of the year so far. <laughs> it's been just no, can, awesome. How about you? Can, can they all be like this week? <laughs> like That'd be okay. I feel like I'm catching up on so much. I, I cleaned my house, <laughs> vacuum rooms that haven't been vacuumed in Ooh. a year because like, so, I just have So that's what color the carpet is. <laughs> usually it's like I'm downstairs and I'm vacuuming up golden retriever fur and then there's some dust and stuff in there and then I vacuumed upstairs for like the first the teenager's supposed to do that right but yeah she went on a sleepover and I'm like opportunity to go and like clean upstairs so much dust I cannot even believe there's no fur because the dog's you know well, yeah. at least the golden retriever wants to stay with me all the time and create his little tumbleweeds down here. Upstairs, <laughs> so dusty, so dusty. It was, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. I got it's too like, much house right now. <laughs> hey, teenager, do you have asthma? Because if you don't, you're gonna clean this place up. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And so she goes over for the sleepover and she's like, I'm not sneezing like I do at home when I wake <laughs> up. And I'm like, Hmm. And she's like, I need hardwood floors. They have hardwood floors here and the things are so much better. And I'm just like, clean your room. Yeah. <laughs> clean your brother's if you, room. If she's you not clean. Here. It's like, it's just like, you've got the space. She's got, she's got basically a small house to herself upstairs. And yeah. 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 Not cleaned. But yeah. That's teenagers that'll for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Like we could get you an air filter or you could just use a dust rag every once in a while. <laughs> maybe once a month but no, my daughter was... growing up her room was always trashed always yeah. trashed and honestly like one of the things that like actually kind of put a wedge between me and my mom growing up is as a teenager and you know now I know that I have like executive dysfunction ADHD tendencies um you know on the spectrum a little bit kind of stuff Back then, none of that was anything we knew about. I wasn't hyperactive, so they didn't think that that was a thing, right? I was on Ritalin or whatever. So it was just me. But So I did not have, and when I say this, it sounds so stupid for other people to hear. I didn't have the ability to keep my bedroom clean. I just could not mentally do it, right? So like there was always clothes everywhere on the floor. And that was a huge point of contention for my mother, but she didn't have to live in the space. So yeah. it didn't, I didn't understand why it was such a big deal to her. If I close the door, why do you care what it looks like on the other side of the door? So when my daughter was growing up, I had a rule for her. Her room could be as messy as she wanted it to be, but three things had to be true in order for me to leave her room alone. One, she had to keep the door closed. Like, I didn't want to see it. I didn't want cats in there peeing on yeah. her, you know, because because they do use litter boxes, but they also will pee on clothes if the opportunity is there sometimes, right? So, like, that's just a thing. Two, no food. No food could yeah. ever be in that room, yeah. period, because that's when you'll get the bugs and the mice. And we lived in a house that was over 100 years old at the time. And three, she could never say, I don't have anything to wear. <laughs> If it was all over her floor, like I right. will help you wash your clothes, but I'm not going into your room to determine what's clean and what's dirty and what I can step on and what I can't step on. Right. Cause I don't know what the, like yeah. the, I'm not Indiana Jones working my way across the tiles, trying to figure out where it's <laughs> safe to step. And so I just let her be. And she was the filthiest, <laughs> the filthiest. Thing. Oh, the fourth thing was that if she ever did want help getting her room back to clean order, I would help without judgment. Because yeah. sometimes the the overwhelm keeps you from cleaning it. And if somebody else could just come in and help you without judgment, then you could get it back to where you wanted it to be. And so she she wrote a, uh, there's a, another story that goes with this, but basically she wrote a letter to a podcast once um, and about an experience that she and I had. But she also talked about the fact that um, growing up, like I just trusted her to have her space and that that was like amazing to her that I would do that she is now a neat freak <laughs> really that's great yeah. and I am too like I try to keep it does I know if you're looking at my background right now this is the leftover of Christmas packing and everything else or wrapping I should say so this room will be back into like a neat and tidy order you also don't see the piles that are over here that I cleared 
out of the way. It's like only what's on camera. But um, but yeah, so I am the same way now. And it's it causes me anxiety and overwhelm when my physical space is cluttered. And um, and it's funny because that's how I lived as a teenager, but now I know, right? Now I know that yeah. had somebody come in, like when your friend comes over, like, oh, let me help you clean your room, it'll be like yeah right like I love going to other people's houses and like oh can I organize your spice rack for you like all those things right but it's harder to do for yourself and so um so yeah so I understand as a teenager it's just we always look at them and go how come they can't but realistically their brains are still learning and growing and understanding how to be the person they want to be within that space. Right. And sometimes there's ADHD and executive dysfunction and other things and mental health issues that come into play um, along the same way. So, so take heart, yeah. Kathy, she's going to get through it and you're going to get through well, it. And it's just, you know, us. actually, <laughs> yeah, actually this summer, um, in July, my husband had to go back into the hospital because they found a blood clot in his leg. Mm, and scary. It just set me back into, you know, it was the same hospital where he had the stroke. And yeah. I've been very lucky in not having to spend a lot of time in hospitals over the past, you know, and then I had PTSD and she knew I was stressing oh, yeah. out and I came home and he had to stay overnight for a few days. And I came home that first night and she was, greets me at the garage door and it's like, I know you're going to be stressed out and I just want you to know everything's going to be okay. And I came into the kitchen. Aww. It was spotless. Aww. Like neater, like everything's put away to the point where I don't know where anything is. <laughs> she did that for me. It was like the, yeah. oh, she obviously, she probably, it probably scared her a little bit too. And it put her sure. in a state of what can I do? How, yeah. how can I help? So I know she's got it in her. So I don't yeah. give her any, you know, I mean, I didn't even say yeah. anything to her. I just, when she came. Oh, she, she texted me and she's like, uh, I left something in my room. Can you go get it and bring it downstairs? And uh, so I went and did this and because somebody was coming over to pick something up. And uh, so I went and did that. And, she, and um, I just said, I cleaned your room for you. And she's like, really? Wow. And she comes home and she's like, thank you. Thank you. And she's so, <laughs> it, it didn't like make a big deal out of it. It was just mm -hmm. like. That's a level of trust. But I just. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, I she needed didn't... her out of there to do it. I can't do it when she's home and she's in there. And I can't do it when I'm working. You know, obviously I've got thing or yeah. taking care of him. So yeah. it was just like, she's gone. It's a quiet week. Perfect opportunity. Now clean. Yeah. So it was. And then the other thing is too, it's like, I was so motivated and tired after doing that. I like cleaned my desk because you know how stuff accumulates. Like my pile of stuff here and, you know, nail trimmers, you're on a meeting and it's like, all right, I sit yeah. through, like all of this stuff that does not relate to what I'm doing. I'm going to clean my nails up and I'm going to, yeah, you know, whatever. You just have all your like little distractions on your desk. I got rid of all of them. My desk is like perfect. I love it. I need to learn how to knit. I have been like when I was in higher ed, there were women who would come to meetings and some of these meetings were an hour, two hours long and they were actively engaged in the meeting, but they needed to be busy and they would knit. Yeah. Or crochet. I mean, I'm going to be honest yeah. and say, I don't know what they were doing. It was yarn and there were needles involved. I think some people were doing one or the other, but I have never learned to do that. But like, man, could you imagine the blankets you and I could be cranking out if, if we were getting under the, yeah. the, the, the camera you know, lens? That, that's so interesting because I've been in a lot of meetings where everybody's just got the camera off and stuff. And those meetings, when I can just turn my camera off, I'm, I'm totally engaged, but I'm tidying up and I'm doing other things while I'm in the meeting. Yep. And it's not that I'm not engaged or taking in the information. Actually, yeah. you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts and a lot of YouTube videos and stuff. I'm not even like watching the video, but I'm listening to it and taking in information while I'm doing other things. Mm -hmm. I would like, you know, this is one of my things for 2023. I'm going to go try to see if I can get in more audio only meetings because I think yeah. I'm be much more productive and happier. If it's mm -hmm. just audio only. Yeah. You know, there's, uh, there's being engaged and then there's being, there's look, having to look engaged, right? Like you can be <laughs> engaged if you're not as worried about like nodding and, mm -hmm, and yeah. whatever, what other people are talking, especially when there's like 13 people in the room. Right. And you're right. just like, <sighs> I'm talking right. for two minutes and listening for, for 45, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. I can also, we could get. We could get yeah. pictures of ourselves or just like screenshots of us, ourselves sitting here looking engaged and 
and totally there and just like put up a little <laughs> over the camera to like go like exactly. the kitchen and like still be connected and everything and but you know if you don't need me here like here's my face <laughs> like, what yep. is this and my podcast so... and my earbuds are in yep <laughs> I also just want to say, though, like for you to be able to say to your daughter, I cleaned your room and for her to say, oh, my gosh, thank you. What a level of trust and what a great relationship that you guys have, because there are so many kids who are like, I don't want you touching my stuff. And like, usually there's nothing that you're going to find. It's not like they're hiding, you know, hardcore yeah. drugs or whatever else. They just kids are so territorial about their space. So for you all to have that kind of trust in that relationship, like kudos for both of you. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I don't go through like the drawers or anything. Actually, yeah, I wouldn't open either. A drawer and to shove something in it and got poked by a push pin. And I'm like, that drawer is her. <laughs> Done. <laughs> you know, whatever's in there. Who yeah. cares? It's yeah, just for sure. like the dust, the piles of clothes. And yeah, the I hear you. Hands. And I don't buy soda. I just buy those like carbonated waters. Like the husband has had. Oh yeah, he has yeah, had a swap. A, yeah, exactly. Like Lacroix, and well, I just buy the cheap Winco stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, he has a swallow issue, and but carbonated mm-hmm. stuff he can drink just fine. So I buy oh, a good. lot of carbonated waters for him. But she buys them and like takes three sips, and then there's like half full cans <sighs> like, yeah. everywhere, which is just like that's why we only get the Winco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the cheap, lower than lower than Walmart even Winco, like the cheapest prices around. I just buy yep. like lemon and lime, and that's your carbonation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, My, mine is the the Wegman's brand. And it's always Wegmans. grapefruit. I love grapefruit flavored. So yeah, that's my, that's my go-to. And I almost always finish them, but when I don't, whatever's left, I pour in a plant. Do you? Nice. And I just use them to water my plants because it's, there's no sugar in there. It's just flavored, you know, water and that's maybe naturally flavored, but it's, it's so minimal. I've never, it's never killed. A, it hasn't killed a plant yet. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Speaking of that. Speaking of plants, let me tell you, last Friday when we were talking, um, you know, was this impending hurricane, uh, you were freezing, like the whole, like half, more than half of the United States was plunged into um, this polar vortex or whatever it was called. My daughter is in Buffalo and they got the brunt of it. So Friday, I get a text message from her saying, um, it's really getting bad here. We've lost power. Um and I said, well, I don't know if it's, you know, I hope it's going to come back. And she says, it's not likely to come back quickly because the, I mean, there was 80 mile an hour winds. It basically was a snow yeah. hurricane wow. inland, right? Because it caused by the Great Lakes. Um, and so a little while later, she texted me and said that they were going to her friend Amanda's, who was literally a city block away. Like they literally just had to, they, my daughter lives on a corner. She had to walk to the end of the block and like down two houses. It took them over 30 minutes to make that walk with oh their cat gosh. and the cat, the cat carrier, they had their dog on a leash and they had whatever p- belongings they needed. You know, she wears contacts, toothbrush, you know, a couple of changes of clothing, whatever. They were there until Tuesday because they finally no got power way. back on Tuesday. Yeah. And I said, speaking of plants, because my daughter doesn't want children, but she is a plant mom, right? She lost over a hundred plants because it got done. Oh my gosh. It was, you know, it's sub-zero, oh, not sub-zero, but it was sub-freezing. And so Mm. their apartment got below freezing and like most of her plants are gone. So, so if you ever, if anybody wants to join the Buy Lydia Plant Fund, let me know. She she goes to Lowe's, she goes to wherever, but I'm I'm kidding about that. But I will be giving her some plants um, to help, help restart her her home nursery that she just yeah. she just loves the greenery and all of that and her of course her, her pets she was able to bring with her but yeah so they they yeah. I think she said that they lifted the travel ban last night so they were under a travel ban from 9 a.m last Friday to Wednesday midnight so that I mean it's terrible the National Guard is outside the city people really can't come and go from the city until like maybe today they finally can Wow. And the death toll is over 30 officially, but oh my people, gosh. people were posting how to take care of dead bodies at home because they knew that people would were dying and, and EMTs, emergency services couldn't get to them. 
So like if you had a family member pass away, whether it was because of the storm or just natural causes, you needed to be able to understand how to care for that person until a coroner or yeah, a funeral director could get there. So it's been pretty bad. I know this is supposed to be motivational uh, podcast, but, but there is still an amazing sense of uh, positivity amongst people in the city there's a whole like politics of it is really horrible right now the blame is being thrown everywhere but the fact that neighbors help neighbors and people are making sure as much as possible that they're sharing um but it's going to be a really long time before buffalo is you know back to whatever wow. normal looks like and the amount of snow that they get over 50 inches in 24 hours yeah, it's crazy. Oh my gosh. And it's supposed to get into the and 40s. And this is like the, sec- the second storm of this magnitude yeah. that they've gotten in the past one like, month. November 17th was the other one, uh, which they were better prepared for. And it was warmer temperatures around that. So um, they didn't lose their power and everything quite as bad. But the the combination of the really, really cold temperatures, the amount of snow that they got and the wind... Um, people were stuck in roads in their cars for days and people died in their cars. Like they're not just pulling out people out of cars, but they were pulling bodies out of cars because people froze to death in their own, in their vehicles. Um, Houses burned down because the fire trucks couldn't get to them when the house caught on fire. Um, So it's, it's, you don't see it in the news because you know, it's, it's yesterday's news in, you know, national news, things, things change and they don't pay attention to things as quickly or as long-term um but if it's in you to send some positivity pray for the people of buffalo it really is something that they could use right now um we didn't get to have christmas together yet because she was stuck of course in a travel ban and Mm. her car is still buried under four feet of snow so they're gonna have to like dig dig out her car but this saturday so this is this is the positivity this saturday we're we're, we have a do-over i'm picking up my mom bringing her in Lydia and John are coming in and we're going to have our Christmas finally together this Saturday morning Saturday afternoon and she said don't you don't have to make lasagna because I made a humongous lasagna I'm going to throw away so much lasagna because I just (laughs) I I couldn't eat it all um so myself my neighbors took some my mom took some um I'll have some more for lunch today and then you know it's it's getting to the end of its week I can't like continue to eat (laughs) lasagna but um but yeah, I'm just going to order pizza and wings and we're going to have a good time together and celebrate the fact that we're, you know, she's okay. They're okay. Their, their pets are okay. And, um, and, and people will, you know, the city will pull itself together um, as it has in previous um, issues last year. As you know, there's that shooting wow. in the, in the grocery store, not yeah. far from where she lives, the grocery store that she goes to. Um, and so Buffalo is, it's a strong city. People will pull together, but there's been looting. There's been, you know, just all kinds of tragedy. And now that the temperatures are supposed to get up in the forties again, there's going to be flooding because all of that yeah. snow has to melt somewhere. So, yeah, so mm-hmm. it's going to, but I'm very much looking forward to seeing them on Saturday. As you all know, I made her that get that um, guess who game and she hasn't seen it yet. And it's been burning a hole underneath the <laughs> my Christmas tree learning to give it to her so so yeah I'm super excited about seeing her and I told I, I texted her uh, she's not she she is a loving person I don't mean it to sound that way but she's not like a hold you cuddle you kind of kid you know she, she I mean she's yeah. 30 she's not a kid but I told her I said prepare for an uncomfortably long hug and she's like I'm okay with that so you it's been a rough oh. time and she's looking forward to seeing her mom yeah. too so Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. That must've been so hard. I know with, um, my son who moved out gosh, it was like a year ago plus and he's up in Minnesota. And so it's like, uh, you know, with this cold snap, I'm checking all yeah. the temperatures and checking in on him all the time. It's so hard when your kids grow up and, and leave and you, they're far away and there's yeah. nothing you can do. Yeah. Like that situation, what could you do to even, she's got a find that resourcefulness within yeah. herself and take care of so, herself and her pets. I couldn't, and... Yeah. You couldn't order them Instacart. Cause like if, right. if EMS couldn't get there, like nobody's delivering groceries, you couldn't right. Amazon her. Like there's a short of like hiring a helicopter and like dropping supplies in, which is not within my resources, by the way, no, you know, it's just like, just te- checking with her, letting her know that she's loved on, on the regular yeah. and and just seeing if there's anything that I could do to help, which I mean, obviously limited, but I, I, the liquor store was the one store that opened early. So 
<laughs> and they've been staying with their friend Amanda for four days. And she said, I said, let me send some money so that you can at least buy groceries or something for Amanda. So she texted me back and she's, I sent her a hundred bucks. She goes, we spent it at the liquor store and replenished her liquor cabin. I'm like, sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> So I do get to spend, I do get to see her before the new year. I get to have Christmas before the new year, which brings us to, and here we are like, you know, just chatting on and on forever, but it's (laughs) almost 2023 and 2022 can bite me. Like 2022 (laughs) is the year that like took a lot, right? It took my dad. It took a lot of things. It it has not been an untroubled year (laughs) in so many ways um 2021 or 2021 oh my god let's not go backwards in time 2023 had better be better that's all I'm gonna say do you I I actually put tweeted the other day that I don't like the idea of resolutions I like the ideas of goals resolutions just has such a negative connotation to me goal sounds positive so do you have any goals for 2023 I do Ooh, share do (laughs) well you know I am really excited about, I'm excited about a lot of things. Yes. I'm excited about human empowerment. You know that. I mean, that's what yes. we're here to do anyway. Um, I'm excited about bringing stories of amazing things that people can do, amazing things people are doing. I love to tell stories or to share stories and to hear stories of 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 amazing things people have done and sort of like how their mindset led them to that place. This morning mm-hmm. I listened, you know, when I walk the dogs, I listen to podcasts and whatnot. And it's just kind of like, a lot of times it's just like, all right, YouTube, what you got, you know? And um, this morning I listened to Carrie Ann Moss, who was Trinity Ooh. in the matrix. Yeah. On, love her. I don't remember what podcast it was, but anyway, she, she popped up. I'll send you a link when we yeah. get off of here. And I, I listened to that and then I came home and did all my morning stuff at the dogs, you know, clean some stuff up. And I just kept listening. It, it was so cool how she like knew when she was a little kid, I'm going to be something cool. I'm going to do some cool things and was like so focused to get there. I want to tell more stories like that. So I, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if I'll carry, carry in if you're listening, <laughs> I'd love to interview you, um, <laughs> but I have a little personal project that I'm starting to tell some of these stories and not just, you know, in the WordPress space, but I'm going to start with the WordPress space because these are the people that I know. And there's so many amazing stories of people who have built lives of the lives that they desire, their, their dreams Mm -hmm. come to life because they're Mm -hmm. like, Oh, this is all I got to do. I can do this. And what (laughs) about this stuff? And then somebody swoops in and helps them. So I want to tell stories of empowerment and I've got a project. The site is built. I'm ready to go. I just have to start interviewing people and put this out there. And I'm super excited about that. I'm super excited. You have to share when you, when you're ready, I can't wait to hear what you're calling it. Cause that'll be fun too. (laughs) Do you know? Did I tell you yet? <laughs> you probably did, but I'm not remembering. <laughs> okay. So. We'll see. All right. So last year, it was last year, about the same time my son moved out. Um, I was going through a lot of stuff and this was even even before the stroke. And I was talking to a friend of mine and I said to them, you are so fantastic. And they said, well, you're Zantastic. And I'm like, <laughs> wine might have been involved, but I was immediately <laughs> like, oh, I'm registering that one. Right. And I, I love it. Like Zantastic.com was like $2,000. And I'm like, yeah, well, oh, Zantastic me, even perfect. So I did Zantastic.me. So I've got the site all built out and all my colors are picked and everything. I just need some like, love it. you know, headshots that are updated yeah. of me and things like that. So Zantastic, it's going to be the Zantastic podcast. And it's like you finding out, you know, what do they call it? A port menu or like Zant and fantastic. Oh yeah. Kind of like, (laughs) kind of like, you know, I was born as Zant. That was my name. It's my maiden name. It's the name Uh that I was given. It's kind of like what I was defined as a lot as, as a young kid because of just how my family was in this smaller town. Everybody knew who the Zants were. Uh And um, to become Zantastic is to take take that and own it, but also to be something more and to be more of I yourself. Love it. So oh, that's goosebumps. Kind of come together. I love it. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. How about you? Do you, do you have some goals? I do. So I had goals that I had established for this year that I didn't do. 
Uh, mostly because life got in the way, especially like, you know, that's my dad in March. So that kind of derailed yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. But there's there's the only thing that said they had to be done this year was me. And so I said they can they can move, they can do next year instead. So I have two goals. One is to write another book. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it's going to be about yet. It might be like more of what my first book was about. That kind of thing might be something different. I'm still like, you know, fitting with that part of it. Um, but the other part is to publish a calendar and it was going to be a 2023 calendar. Clearly that's not going to happen. Um, it's going to be a 2024 calendar. And I have a friend, she's an amazing woman. She lives locally here. Um, I think she's in her late seventies. Um, I never asked her, but I, I'm assuming she's in her late seventies. She is battling cancer for the fourth time. She is a woman of gratitude, even though she has been going through surgeries and, um, you know, is a, a, a colon cancer, and she said breast cancer. Her daughter had breast cancer last year. Like this woman has dealt with so many amazing, like oppositions. And by amazing, I don't mean great. I mean like just like tremendous opposition. Um, she continues to be a woman of gratitude and wow. to support others. And even if it's just like she posts things on Facebook just that are uplifting. And um, our goal was to do a book or something together. And then I thought, why don't we do a calendar with my photography and her words of gratitude? And so we are going to do that, but we're going to do a gratitude journal together with my photography nice. and her words. And so we're going to publish a journal next year um, with prompts and with, you know, for, cre for creating gratitude um, and remembering and re remarking on your gratitude because gratitude can often change your outlook on uh, situations as you and I both know this year there's things yeah. that you know over the last year and a half that have been tremendously difficult and tremendously painful and tragic but even in tragedy obviously sometimes I should say not not maybe not obviously but in the middle of it you often don't see the grit where you can be grateful in the situation yeah. but hindsight will allow you to find moments that you can say this happened but I'm still grateful for xyz um Right. Uh, when I was in Tennessee, um, selling my dad's house, as difficult as it was, I made some friends down there who are still my friends. And we text each other frequently and they're, they're going to plan to come visit me um, in this next year. And so I have gratitude for yeah. that. And the churches that were down there, my dad had a church and my brothers had a church. They took up offerings for three months and continued to give us money to, um, to buy food while we were there taking care of the boys. Wow to they they came over and mowed the mowed the yard and like it was it was two acre yard I mean we're talking big stuff and so um so I have gratitude through that and so through the people who provided and the people who provided support whether it was financial or emotional or whatever and so there are ways to find gratitude in spite of and I know you, you your sense of humor has helped you find gratitude and reach out to people and, and be supportive to others through what you've gone through too and so I think that that's going to be a really good project um, and a good goal for this next Amazing. year. Amazing. I am so excited by that. You know, as you're something that I just heard over the past few days, um, you know, people like you and me and, and your friend who have gone through really difficult times, it, it changes them. You can't mm -hmm. go through life and go through upheaval like that and not be changed. Mm -hmm. But what I think this, this parallel, uh, analogy metaphor came in where they talked about like the glaciers in the northern climates that that mm -hmm. come in and and compress the land but then as soon as the glaciers recede as soon as that pressure goes away the ground starts to expand and if you think about it you know we become changed by these experiences and it it changes us much like a glacier going through and, and changing the land um, it's almost like the the container of who we are becomes expanded. Mm -hmm. And if you can just use gratitude, even for like the smallest thing, use gratitude to fill that container. It's like you started with a cup, right? But this this pressure came in and expanded who you really are. You can hold so much more gratitude, so much more joy, your ability to feel, you know, it, it, there's a lot of people who go through life just like surface level or goes through life, you know, just not really getting deep, not really living life um to the fullest and 
these experiences, while they're hard, if you sort of let go and surrender to them, they expand you in a way where you can live a more fulfilling life because you have the capacity to feel everything at a deeper level, not just the Mm -hmm. hurt because you allowed, you know, that thing to transform you. You can now feel joy. You can now feel gratitude. You can now hold space for other people that you couldn't Mm -hmm. maybe do before. Um, you know, I mean, people who go through life and everything's perfect for them all the time. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. (laughs) Wouldn't that be nice? But but yeah. (laughs) But when yeah. they, when I talk to, you know, there's a lot of people I talk to and they, they don't know how to talk to me about, um, the stuff that I'm going through. There's my mother, for example, she's like listening to me actually like deal with um, my husband when he's like upset or he doesn't know something's not right with him. And he, it's harder for him to get his words out at that point. And so I have to play, you know, maybe it's making me more psychic, who knows, <laughs> but I'm like, trying to figure out what he's asking for like the other last yeah. few days ago he was asking me for goldilocks and i'm like <laughs> no idea whatsoever <laughs> and he's like goldilocks goldilocks and i'm like you need water and he's like not, like not being able to tell me it was uh cold water cold oh. water was goldilocks and my daughter comes in she must have got the sense of humor for me she comes in mm-hmm. she's like well wouldn't goldilocks be like the lukewarm water not too hot too, not too cold <laughs> <laughs> I'm like touche you've got a point there but like my mom listens to these types of things and she's just like you're a saint and i'm like this is life this is what yeah. we go through this is mm-hmm. my husband i can't put him in a nurse i can't live with myself putting him right. in a nursing home i have to live right. through this i have to go through this and you know i am surrendering to this experience for whatever it gives me mm-hmm. and you know what that story would have story's hilarious on <laughs> uh, my daughter's ability to like step into that and you know yeah world look out for who this child is going to be when she's out on her own because yeah. she has dealt with some of the hardest things mm-hmm. and it it's changed her it's going yeah. to make her much more resilient and for just yeah. achieving because when you're yep. trying to achieve something when you set a goal it's not like you know it's like oh well there's my happy little goal you're going <laughs> to reach a point on that journey where it's like why did I decide to do this? This is hard. And if you're resilient and you have, you know, moved through difficult situations in the past, you're able to move through those challenges Mm -hmm. and achieve so much more because it's like, I can hold space for this. No problem. This is temporary. I can, I still know where I'm going. So, so yeah, I'm really looking, looking forward to your gratitude journal (laughs) because coming from someone like you and coming from your friend, it's going Mm -hmm. to be something of, tremendous impact just because of who you are well I I hope so I hope that the heart that we put into it will reach other people to find the gratitude and and the positivity um and things in their own life for sure um I know that there are days when I I have friends who keep I've never kept a gratitude journal and I you know maybe 2023 by the year I start doing that but they say that if you you know every day write down 10 things and even even if it's just you know my, my my seltzer water um, yeah. glasses that let me see, like it can be things that just feel like everyday things, but it's about, you know, your mindset and, and your, um, mindset is so important. So important. Um, it's but when you said that about, about your daughter too, I, I was thinking about that there's, that she's going to be empowered, right? So there's a big difference between empowerment and entitlement. And it sounds like she has, is becoming empowered through her experiences, not entitled yeah. because she's been, you know, had a life of ease. <laughs> so it's great. We've probably it's, gone on way a longer than spoiled though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, who isn't right. But like, um, if you're still listening, you know, Hey, thanks for hanging in there. We love <laughs> that. You love our conversations. Uh, we do just tend to just go on sometimes. And, and that's, that's the fun of it too, though. Seriously. It's like a lot of, a lot of fun. <laughs> well, to me, it's like you, you make me remember a lot of things that maybe, you know, it's like, okay, I had these like Same. observations or like listening to that podcast this morning. Wow, this is really deep. And, but you, you bring out in me sort of a depth of observation that I carry with me. I hope it's of impact to someone else because I think these conversations so really do matter. So yeah. I'm, uh, and it, even if we're the only one. <laughs> even if we're the only ones getting anything out of it, I'm, I'm cool to keep publishing. I love it. 
And if you're listening, this is our 15th podcast episode already. It feels like just yesterday when I said to you, hey, you want to do a project? And like, you know, by Monday we had it all published (laughs) because we are women of action. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we are. Wow. That's so cool because we're at 15, but like a year ago we started the cadence beat and that's like only at 22 or 23 now. (laughs) So it's, uh, well, we haven't missed a week. We did. We haven't missed a week and I wanted, I don't want the, you know, the marketing to put too much pressure. I want Ben to feel no, freedom not. to do yeah. it. He's got so many things that he's doing and I'm like, okay, but I still want to talk to him. It's so, a and different podcast. Yeah. 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 So, and it's good, but it's like every time we publish one, when's Cadence Black's three coming? When's it coming? It's just like, oh my gosh, it's coming. We're working on it. <laughs> oh no. Now we put out goals for 2023 and people are going to be, hey, when's that, when's that journal coming? When's that count? Yeah. <laughs> Hold your horses, people. We'll get to it. (laughs) Anyway, cheer us on. Absolutely. Well, best wishes for a great start to 2023. I know we talk to each other all the time, but I'm saying it publicly. Um, And happy new year to you and your family, Kathy. Yeah, to you too. I'm so, well, happy, happy belated Christmas. (laughs) I'm so glad that you. you and Lydia and your mom and everybody can get together this weekend and have the Christmas that should have been last Me weekend. I'll, and I'll post pictures. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to hear how she likes her gift. That is so I fun. Know. I'm so excited. Should it be the last gift or the first gift? I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. I'll let her play Santa, yeah. whatever she pulls out from under the tree. It's all great. Good, so, all right. Mwah. Much love. We'll see everybody Much in 2023. Love. Consider, um, uh, sponsoring the podcast we're gonna start putting out for sponsorship if you're interested we would love to talk to you and uh we'll see you next year bye